Hey, welcome everyone to Caspia Live. It's Ned. Uh, I hope you guys can hear me okay. Let me know in the chat window if you can so that we can begin with today's content. Hey, Heather, good to see you. Stability, nice to see you as well. <laughs> good to see uh, we have a good attendance rate for today. I know that we moved the live stream from a Monday to a Wednesday. So happy that you guys were able to make it. Hey, Stephanie. Sounds good, Lucas. All right. Yeah, so we've moved it to a Wednesday, actually, not a Tuesday. Is today Tuesday? No, it's Wednesday. So not a Tuesday stream, but a Wednesday stream. Thanks, Kinkapo. Welcome back. It's good to see you. I know you've been missing in action the last couple of live streams, but welcome back. Um, yeah, so we have um, the application or the use case that I decided to build today is the employee onboarding. But before I get into it, I just want to clear something up because it was brought to my attention recently. Um, the way you see my account, I have a list of applications in here, and I just want to make sure everybody's following the best practice. Just because I have a list of uh, applications in my account, you can see how many I have. That doesn't mean that your account should look the same exact way where you have all of these applications for different components, um, different needs. Really, when you have multiple applications, um, typically our resellers will have multiple applications because they're building applications from multiple clients. So that's one example why you might have multiple apps. Uh, universities will typically have a lot of applications inside their account because you might have school of business, they might have an application, but it's not gonna be linked to, I don't know, art department or music department because it's a completely separate need and the users are not gonna access both, both of those applications. Uh, so for example, let's say you have a CRM to manage contacts and now the users need to have some kind of a task management application. You can build that functionality inside the same app. You don't need to build a completely different app container and all the functionality for that. That can all be under one ecosystem for that specific application. Okay, I just want to clear that up because it was brought to my attention uh, recently. Uh, the only reason why, why I have multiple applications in here is they're not really related. They're different use cases for different industries. Um, and it's easier for me to kind of demo these applications during my live stream so I don't have to go inside one app and then find the data pages and tables that I need, because otherwise it would get really messy. Okay, so that's what I wanted to bring up before we begin today's live stream. Hopefully that's clear. Um, most applications, most of our customers will have maybe one, two, or three applications at most. Um, and then if it's for different departments, uh, you could end up having multiple applications, one for each department. But if the users are somehow associated or the app or the functionality, yeah, you might be able to just put everything inside a single app. Uh, what's the best practice for add-on modules? Uh, like the CRM, but additional functionality will be available at a different tier. Uh, so again, for a CRM, I would still recommend keeping everything inside a simple, uh, single application. It uh, depends on a module too, but I'm, I'm imagining that if it's a task or support, it can all fall under one, one application. I think it's, um, it's a little bit easier to manage from that perspective as well, to manage the functionality of all the data pages. And then you can organize it by having multiple folders inside the application. At least that's how I would build it, but there's no right or wrong answer here. It's just whatever preference you have um, and how you like to organize it. Okay, so let's get into a live demo of my employee onboarding use case. Um, typically for new hires, you might have a process where HR wants to track a couple of things for new hires, maybe sign off on all the paperwork. You might have maybe an overview, uh, overview video they need to see, uh, maybe a orientation of some sort. And there are checkboxes that you can check off either as a new hire or the HR manager or somebody on the HR staff can check off that as well until the whole entire process is completed. Uh, so in my application, I have a very simple dashboard here. Nothing that you see here is Caspio. This is just a simple template that I downloaded. Uh, and obviously, I can replace all of these elements with Caspio data pages if needed. But here in the menu, as Molly, I've tucked away uh, this tab here, this in the drop-down menu, I have calling an employee onboarding. It'll be kind of hidden. It won't be on the dashboard when you first log in. But when I go there as Molly, employee onboarding, now I'm seeing a Caspia data page and I can see 
all the steps that I'm either yet to complete or I've completed. So for example, office tour currently is incomplete. Uh, and I can update that progress using a simple form. So for the office tour, if I've completed that, I can just check that off and I can just say date completed and hit update. And as soon as I update, now I can see that it's been completed and we have the date. I could have also listed time here as well. That would have been helpful. Um, I didn't think of that. And then on the HR side, I have a very simple data page. I don't have this embedded anywhere. It's just a direct link from Caspio. If I pull up that employee now, I should be able to see from the HR side what's been completed and what hasn't been completed. And I can also update the process as HR as well. Um, so I'm a huge advocate of just building something very simple initially um, as the MVP. And then later on, you can just add more components to it if you want to make it more dynamic where you, you know, don't allow the user now to modify once it's been completed and only the HR can do that. Uh, but build something simple initially uh, just so you can go live with it and then eventually you might make updates to it uh, as you go on. So it's a very simple app, nothing really too complicated here. Uh, as the um, employee, I can come back here and I can update my progress. So let's say I finished all the team introductions. I can say today's date and that's been updated. And also that will reflect here on the HR side once we pull up the user's info. Okay. So that's the simple app that we have. Again, I'll make this available as a download in the YouTube description later today, but let's go through it and see how that was created. So inside the user table, um, you can add all of these checkbox fields. It's a yes and no data type. And then we have the date completed for office tour, date completed for team intro, date completed for IT support. And each one of these will have a yes and no data type along with the date. Okay. So inside my data sheet, because I've completed two of those, you can see how the data is populating. Both of those have been checked off and we have our date when it was completed. So you may or may not have a need for that, but I recommend that you include that in the same user table uh, because I'm imagining that all the new hires will go through the same steps. You know, everyone has to watch that video. Everyone has to fill out the paperwork. Everyone needs to get help from the IT to set up their station. Um, what else do I have? Everyone needs to, um, maybe some paperwork. I've already mentioned that one, team intro, and maybe some office tour. I only have a few check boxes, right? Um, or maybe that you have some kind of a company guidelines that you need to read, you know, um, for all of the new, new hires. So that's my table. Uh, you can also have the same fields if you'd like, or you can modify the fields depending on your need. And then on the data pages, so let me take a look at my question. Is there a way for it to autocomplete once they complete the task? And what is MVP? Minimum viable product, MVP. Minimum vi uh, viable product, which means it's just, um, maybe it's in beta, it, it can go live for the users to to interact with, to, to fill out, um, just something that it's ready, functional, it's ready. You don't have to worry too much about all the bells and whistles that you might add later on. Um, it, don't worry about perfection, just go live with it. It's, it's, it's usable, essentially. And then later on, you can add other modules to it and components um, as you'd like. Um, is there a way to autocomplete once they complete the task? And what is the... Is there a way for it to autocomplete once they... So how would we know to autocomplete if they complete the task? That's... So for example, if I'm looking at a um, office tour, right? That's something that I would go around the office, do team intros. Um, somebody has to check that off that it was completed. I don't think there's a way for it to autocomplete. Uh, maybe in some checkboxes we could, if you watch the video and let's say the video comes to an end, um, we might have some kind of automation there to trigger the checkbox to be checked when the video is completed. Um, uh, I was thinking uh, a fill in the blank training form after the office tour. Okay, we, we can we can address this a little bit later today. I'll bring this back up in our live stream and then we can we can talk a little bit more about that. Let me take a look at your second question. So would we add these extra fields to the original table if this is added on later 
correct. Yeah, so you can add these fields later on too. Correct. And to the same table. I would add it to the same table. Okay. So let's have a look and see what we have here. So under the employees, I have uh, my HTML data page that redirects. So here on my bootstrap template, I'm actually logged in already as the employee. I don't think I have the logout set up. Let me just see. I do have it set up. So now when I log in as molly at molly.ly at uh, employee.com and I input my password. Is it employee.com? Let me take a look at my, <laughs> I've forgotten my uh, credentials here. So let me go to my directory really quickly. Uh, let's open it up. Uh, Molly.ly at company.com. Is that what, uh, yeah, at company.com. So let's come back here and try that one more time. Molly.ly at company.com. Log in. All right, so now I'm logged in. So redirect, and then here when I click on the onboarding link, it takes me to this data page, and that data page is this one here. So let's go into it. This is the uh, employee onboarding. So it's a direct to details data page, as you can see, it's a details data page. Uh, we use our authentication to make sure it's password protected. Uh, and then obviously as the employee, I need to see my own data. So we apply the uh, record level security based on the user ID. No need to filter anything. And then you include the fields that you need to see on that onboarding page. You don't need to include all the fields. You don't need to have last name, first name, full name. That can be part of the profile page because you might have a separate page on your website where the user can see their profile information. And on that page, you might include title, department, and all this other info. But for these fields, we include those in the details page because we need to be able to check off office tour, team intro, and all the other ones. And now for this page, I do have a lot of conditional rules set up using the rules tab, or at least I thought I did. Oh, you know what? That's on the update form. I'm sorry, not on the details page. The details page is just going to display the information. So we have the HTML block that displays my heading my onboarding progress, and then we have office tour, which will be display only. They complete it, it's also display only. And then we have all the other fields just as a display only. One other thing that I'm doing here for the checkbox, you can see I have a custom formatting on the checkbox where I say if it's completed, so if it's yes, if that item has been checked off, it's gonna turn that into a blue text. And if it's incomplete, if it's still not checked, it's gonna be red. And that actually re reflects here on my front end too. You can see how if, if it's a no, it's red. If it's completed, it's blue. Okay, so that's really it in terms of um, in terms of uh, the details page, which is everything is read only. There's nothing really else uh, fancy that's happening here. But then when you update, when I click on update progress, here's where I have a, lo a lot of conditional rules to show and hide these elements when I check on them. And of course, when you check this box, this field needs to be required as well. If I try to submit this form now, it's not gonna let me because it's a required field. I have to input the date. So then coming over here to the other data page where we update the progress, I'm using a single record update. Okay, so I have to find that record using the UID, which is the user ID. So when I click on the button to update the progress, at the same time, I'm passing the user's ID to that update form. And then we need to filter out the information based on that user ID. I have the same exact fields, okay, listed in my update form. And here's where we now introduce the conditional rules and you can see quite a few of them. Okay, I know it looks uh, intimidating, but I promise it's really not. Uh, for every single one of the checkboxes that I have, I have a section. So Office Tour has section one. Okay, and the date completed, which belongs to Office Tour, is section two. So each one of these two fields will have its own section. So if you look at Team Intro, it has its own section. If you look at Date Completed, it also has its own section. Because when I check an item off, there are two things that are happening before that item is checked. One, by default, if it's not checked, we hide the date field. But if it's checked, we expose the date field, but we make that date field required. Okay, so there are two rules that are actually happening on that date field. 
one to hide it and one to make it required based on the input in the prior field. So that's what the rules are doing basically. So if the office tour is not checked, okay, so if that field is not checked, hide section two. So we hide the section underneath it if it's not checked. However, if office tour is checked, make the date field for office tour required. And you just repeat the steps for all the other ones. So if the team intro is not checked, make section four hidden. If team intro is checked, make the date completed for team, uh, date completed for team intro required. And again, just repeat the step for all of your other fields. Okay, so very, very simple, nothing fancy there. It's just all standard features in Caspio to apply these conditional rules to, to your fields that you have here. So when you do that on the front end, uh, you have this nice um, um, feature where you can now input the field and show and hide these elements based on the completion. And then when you hit update, the data page behind that will automatically update as well. Okay. All right. So let's see what we have on the um, HR side. So as the HR, uh, we have the same thing. Essentially, we have the same exact thing where first we can pull up the employee. So that's really the only difference here. I have a search form. So remember on the employee side, I didn't have a search form. I just filtered my own data because I wouldn't see some other employees or new hires information. It, it's just pulling up my information. But for the HR, we have the ability to search based on the full name. And I created that to be a very simple dropdown. Okay, where we look into a table and my lookup table is the user table where I can quickly pull the name of the employee inside that drop down. So that's why here on the front end, I can have this nice drop down where I can pull the information's name. If I leave it under select employee, it's going to say required because we cannot leave that empty. It's a required field. Okay, and my custom value here, you can see a null value blank value because it's required. It has to recognize the value. So you have to select the name before you can pull up that employee's details. Okay, so then here on the front end, you pull up the employee's detail, and now it's going to show you the exact same thing that the employee sees. Okay. All right. So today was a quick session. Uh, next week, let me just take a look at my title for next week. I do believe I have something fairly exciting. And what I would like to do is actually build it during our class. So it might actually exceed one hour. Uh, but let me take a look at my, um, my topic for next week. Yeah, so building a customer knowledge base. And we're going to build this application next week from scratch. So if you want to see how an application is built from start to finish, join me in the next class. And what the application is going to have is a public facing knowledge base that you can embed into your own support page. And then you have users in the back end who can log in and provide these um, tech tips or knowledge bases on different, different topics. So when the user posts it, it's going to be published on the public knowledge base. We're going to do some metrics as well, where you can track how many times in certain, certain article has been viewed by the public user. Um, and then you can also use um, our text area has the ability to use just standard text, but you can also convert the text area into uh, one of those rich text areas where you can input HTML. So I'm going to try to do something fancy with it where just like our own public facing knowledge base, if you go to Caspio's howto.caspio.com, uh, you can run a search and then you can search across many fields inside the article. So if we look for inline, um, the customers will be able to see the results. We can go into details. And then what we're going to enable here is for your backend user, when they're posting the article, they can also have images, they can have text. So your public user can see all of this. And underneath, uh, we can have some kind of a comment section where your public user can comment if that was a good, good article, give you some feedback on how you can improve. Okay. And I'm also going to try to build a nice dashboard for the back back office uh, where, um, let's see, where management can see, you know, top articles, trending articles, um, feedback based on comments and things like that. Okay, so that's what we're going to cover on Wednesday next week. 
uh, for our live stream topic. And again, I always keep repeating myself, you know, if you guys would like to see something in the live stream, please let me know. Send me an email. I will be more than happy to include that in my uh, talk track uh, during the live stream. I have no issues with that as long as it's worthwhile and can benefit other people and it doesn't take a lot of time. You know, I'm more than happy to bring that into the live stream. So, Stability and family, if you want to just send me a quick email regarding what you were asking. I hope that you found today's session um, helpful. Um, nothing fancy. I always, always try to build something as simple as possible um, just to get it out live for my end user. And then later on, I can make modifications to it if I, if I want to. Uh, but it's a simple app, it doesn't really require, or it's a simple component that doesn't really require too much um, modifying or building um, for the end user, or new hires in this case. Does anyone have a need for something like that, what we looked at today? Will anyone even try to incorporate that into their application? I'm just curious. If not, that's okay. Not everyone has a need for something like this, but it's typically seen... Uh, for new hires, you know, when you bring them on board, you want to make sure they've gone through all of the onboarding um, before they are able to um, be a proactive member of the team, you know, and contribute. <laughs> okay, so I have one yes. That's good to know. Um, yes, but more automated. Uh, if you don't mind, Heather, just send me an email in terms of uh, what you mean by more more auto uh, automated, and I can. Uh, maybe we can revisit this in the next week as well, and I can try to create some more automation inside this application that we looked at today. Curious to know uh, how you would approach the automation process of it. Because like what the question came up earlier is, you know, can we make it more automated? I just don't know how we can do so with like something like an office tour or completed all the paperwork. Uh, Sometimes you might have physical paperwork that you need to fill out and sign off of, and then you have to go into the app somehow and uh, make that change that I completed all my paperwork. Uh, some things can be automated, like that video that I mentioned. If you watch the company video, um, then you can, at the end of the video, automatically check that off. But I would love to know how we can uh, automate this more, and I would be more than happy to add some script or something to it to make that happen. Uh, let's see, could we use this for new a uh, agent uh, associates to complete a training module type thing? Yeah, definitely. Absolutely. You can definitely use it for that as well. I plan to build something for our HR. Okay, good. Thanks, Judith. Uh, yes, we currently use, and I was interested in seeing some of the things you did versus our setup. Okay, good. Hopefully you saw something new. If not, <laughs> uh, I know I built something very simple here, so hopefully you can make something um, useful out of it. Uh, I will make it available as a download. Uh, yeah, send it over, Heather, please. I always like to get people's ideas because I'm not an expert in all of these components and applications. Um, I've built some in different industries, but again, um, I don't make it a habit of going out there and, and doing my research as extensively as I should these days because I'm just preoccupied with other stuff at Caspio. But um, I'm sure there's stuff that I miss in my, in my demos here, in my live stream. But that's what you guys are here for. You're the experts. And if you need something, let me know. I will deliver uh, to the best of my ability. Uh, let's see. Mine are all virtual ICs. So it's different in that respect. Okay. All right. Uh, I can use some of its features in other app. Okay, good to know, Lucas. Um, all right. By the way, I'm the only one who comes up with these live stream topics. You know, I, I try to see what's trending out there uh, on the web and try to bring that into the live stream. I know we have one for COVID when COVID was trending. I did one for school safety because that's trending. Um, so whatever is trending out there, I try to bring into the live stream. And if nothing is trending, then I'll just pick and choose whatever I think could be valuable. Can you capture an electronic signature? Yes, you can, uh, but that's through an extension. That's not part of our standard offering. So yes, you, it's possible, but it would have to go through our professional services team. And I don't try to bring that into the live stream because 
Again, it's available as an extension from Caspio's Marketplace. So if you go under Product and Marketplace, you can do an e-signature extension. So one of these. So data integration, maybe. We are. Yeah, the filtering thing here is still a little tight. Let's see, app extensions. So extensions. So e-signature is available. We might even have something on our forum if you want to try it out. Forums.caspio.com. And if you go to Caspio JavaScript Solutions, let's see if it's still available here in the forum. Adding a digital signature to a submission form. So this is copy and paste. If you follow the instructions and you add this to your data page, then yes, you can have a signature text area inside the submission form where people can use either a, a tablet with one of those uh, e-pens, or you can just use a finger and just um, scribble something inside that text area. But it's very straightforward. I know it looks like it's not. These are just uh, modifications of different implementations that you can do if you'd like. But this is really the tutorial. Everything above this highlighted word is all the tutorial that you need to make that happen. So let me send you this link, uh, link so you can have it in the chat window here as well. Okay, I'll spend some time this week breaking down the components for SaaS and send it over. Okay, cool. I love SaaS applications. Absolutely, 100%, my favorite type of applications to build are SaaS type applications. Don't get me wrong, I've built plenty of internal ones too, but SaaS are more fun, <laughs> in my opinion. Yeah, I sent the link in the chat. Let me know if you didn't get it. to add to the HR app. Okay, good. So you can try to configure this yourself or you can go through a professional services team to get a professional installation of the e-signature to your application. Agree too, yeah. Yeah, I've built quite a few SaaS applications. <laughs> Even this demo one that I have that was kind of playing around with uh, some app.com, NP, uh, JB, so I was kind of playing around with this one here for a job board type application where companies can log in, um, add jobs. Well, let me just show you if you guys have the time. If you have to go, you can go. You don't have to stick around anymore. Um, we've covered all the topic. This is just for fun, extra overtime information here. So we'll just log in real quick and I can, sh wait. And I can kind of show you. By the way, um, you can sign up as a new company. Um, and then once you sign up, you sign in. And then when you log in, you're going to be able to see all the interviews that you have coming in for all of the jobs that you're posting publicly. The whole idea here, the whole premise of this app is one, you can manage your applicants. Uh, this is all test data. And then in the applicant details, if you were to, let's say, go to Mary's account uh, for this candidate, you know, you can edit the applicant details. You can see all the interviews you have coming up. Uh, and then the phone feedback and video in-person feedback is once you've completed that interview, uh, your employee can submit the feedback on how they felt about that candidate. Here's a list of jobs, right? So this is all the jobs that are listed inside this application uh, or inside this company uh, that signed up for the account. So these are all the positions that we're currently hiring for. Uh, these are all the internal users that we're managing. We have some reports, but here's the critical piece of this application, which is something you would see in Caspio. Um, if I now want to embed this job board to my own website as a company, I can just grab this embed code. And something you might have not known is that we can actually create things like this and pass the ID into this embed code. So in this case, uh, this is passing the company ID which belongs to the company that signed up for the account. Now, I'm not going to embed this. I'm just going to show you a direct link. So if I share this with a potential candidate, or even if I send you guys this link via chat, you guys can click on that link. And then when I go to that link, I'm going to be able to see this data page that shows all of these open positions. And the whole idea now is for a new candidate to, let's say I want to apply for system admin. I come over here. I say apply now. I fill out this form. And once I fill out that form, the company will get an email notification. We log into our account and now I will be able to see that applicant listed here and now I can schedule them for an interview 
and do the whole interview process. This is something I was playing around with, this application. Um, wanted to see how, how much I can build. Uh, it's definitely nothing for commercial use or anything like that. It's just for my own uh, tinkering that I did a little while back um, as I was thinking about what I could do with the whole deployment part. Um, yeah, but that's that's kind of a SaaS type system where now if you wanted to, you could monetize that by charging them a monthly fee or you know you can make it a freemium model if you'd like. Anyway, simple, simple SaaS type application uh, for companies to leverage if they need a public facing job board that can either be embedded in their own site or shared using that direct link. And then if I add a user, now that's other user will be able to log in and do the same thing. They won't have as much functionality. They'll, they'll see a limited navigation menu, but they're going to be able to now manage um, if I assign a specific candidate to one of my employees, which is handled by setting up the interview. So if I go to Mary Gonzalez here, and if I set up an interview, I can assign that interview with somebody from my team. And then of course you can phone interview, interview date, and then you set the time, uh, send an email reminder one hour prior to the interview so that uh, whatever person that I select up here will be reminded one hour before the interview uh, to log in and um, make sure they submit their feedback. Yeah, I can add this job board. If you guys want this application, it's, it's, I don't know how many data pages it currently has. It's not a completed app, just FYI. If you want this, I can provide it, but it's not a complete app. Okay, just keep that in mind. Uh, but I can give you all the things that I've done uh, and you can download it. Not a problem at all. Okay, so I think we can end today's session with that. Let me know if you have any last minute questions, comments. Thank you so much for coming back. I know it's, a, it's Wednesday, so we moved the live stream and I'm happy to see that the attendance didn't drop off. Uh, because we moved the live stream to a different day. So thank you so much. I hope you have a good rest of the week. And uh, we'll see you Wednesday for the uh, knowledge base application that we're going to build from start to finish. When I say from start to finish, the tables are already going to be built. Okay, we don't want to spend time building the tables. That's just going to eat up a lot of time. But I will show you each one of my tables, all the fields that they have. And then we're going to build all of our authentications and we're going to build all of our data pages. Uh, have I covered a pop-up app in the past? Are you referring to this modal pop-up? Uh, let me know if that's what we're talking about, Luke. Yeah, I have cut. This is the modal pop-up that I have covered in the past. If you go to YouTube, let me just pull this up for you really quickly. I'll share the link to YouTube. Modal pop-up. And you'll find everything you need in that video and also the description. So let me just pull that up. Give me one second. All right. So let me. I don't want to listen to myself. I'm always listening to myself. <laughs> All right. So let's bring this up. And I will just share the link. And there's the link. So if you follow the video, you can also download the instructions to the modal tutorial. It's very simple, plug and play. And then if you have buttons in your reports or your details pages, you can have that pop up show up in the middle. That way you don't have to navigate to a completely separate web page, you know, which takes time. Uh, everything is all in one page. It's much easier and much more efficient uh, to the end user as well. You bet. All right, thank you so much. Again, I will go ahead and now close the live stream. I'll keep the chat running as always for a few more minutes. Um, and then, yeah, have a good rest of the day. We'll see you next week. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.